Welcome to EZLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to continue with rates of reaction and reversible reactions. We have been focusing on the factors affecting the rate of reaction. So for today we are going to focus on light. We'll see how light affects different reactions and we'll look at a few questions. So uh, the effect of heating and illuminating substances is usually the same. So in both cases, the constituent particles absorb radiant energy, leading to an increase in the number of particles with activation energy, which leads to increased rate of reaction. So there's an energy that is absorbed from the light that is illuminated on the reactants. So light energizes these particles involved in a reaction which increases the effective collisions per unit time, so increasing the rate of reaction. So remember we said these collisions need to be successive, successful or effective, otherwise the reaction is not going to produce the product we want. So light of a higher frequency give higher reaction rates in G like UV light. So examples of reactions affected by the light are those involving halogens. So examples of those reactions are, as we discussed before, when you react the reaction between chlorine and hydrogen, it never usually happens in presence of exposed light. It's in exposed, like in darkness, it happens when exposed. Otherwise, this reaction does not occur. So when chlorine reacts with hydrogen in presence of UV, it forms hydrochloric uh, gas. So there is also the reaction between methane and bromine, which is a substitution reaction. We discussed this before. Remember this substitute, when you look at the structure, this is a methane that is reacting with a bromide gas. So the presence of UV light helps into breaking these boards. When it breaks the board of hydrogen, then it's the bromine also, this is broken, it's able to substitute. So we end up having a bromomethane and then hydrogen bromide is given off as you can see from the product. So it tells you that the ultraviolet rays that are given off, they give energy. This energy helps the particles to react. And in this case, we know some boats needs to be broken and new ones needs to be formed. So that energy helps in breaking those boats that needs to be broken. And then new boats are formed as a result of the interaction of the particles. So when you look at the decomposition of silver bromide, so we add 20 centimeters cubed of potassium bromide in a glass beaker. And then we add 5 centimeters cubed of silver nitrate in the uh, so solution is added to where the potassium bromide is. So the resulting pale yellow precipitate is divided into three portions in three separate test tubes. So the one of the test tube uh, is immediately placed in a dark cardboard, the second one on the bench, and the other one is put directly next in the source of the light, in g some light. So you notice there is a formation of a yellow precipitate of silver bromide when silver nitrate reacts with potassium bromide. It's like a double decomposition reaction, formation of silver, silver bromide and potassium nitrate, and the silver bromide that is formed is yellow in color, it's a precipitate. So the test tube in the light, the precipitate changes its color from pale yellow to gray, and then the one on the bench, it changes its color from pale yellow to a slight gray, but the one that is in the dark, it doesn't change the color of the precipitate at all. So you know this is a double decomposition, so the pale yellow uh, solid that is formed is because of the production of silver bromine. So the reason why uh, this happens is because light decomposes silver bromide to form silver and bromine gas. So you see silver bromide decomposes in presence of light. So when there is no observable change in the light, it means we didn't have enough energy to break those board between silver and bromide ions. So the degree of decomposition change depends on the light intensity falling on the test tubes. So the rate of decomposition of bromide will increase in light intensity. So lights affect the rate of some chemical reaction by energizing the particles involved in a reaction and increase the chances 
for effective collision spa unit time, thus increasing the rate of reaction. So other, other applications of effects of light on rate of reaction, we have processing of white and photographic films. It's usually done in dark places. That's why they have those dark rooms because we don't want the decomposition of silver bromide that is used to coat a photographic place. So other examples of reaction is also in the, in the uh, reaction of chlorine with hydrogen, as we said, the reaction of uh, alkanes with halogens. We also have the reaction of carbon dioxide and water in presence of light as is a photosynthesis, the production of sugar, which also depends on light as we learn in biology. So this is a sample question uh, which is in regards to an application of uh, effects of light on um, the rate of reaction. So bromine and ethane react as shown below. So you can see the bromine reacts with ethane to form bromoethane and hydrogen bromide. What condition is necessary for this reaction to occur? So this reaction you need UV light because you know that UV light provides energy that helps in breaking the board so that new boards also can be formed. Identify boards that which are broken and those that are formed. So those that are broken, we have, when you open this structure, So we have uh, the carbon hydrogen board is broken and the bromine bromine board is broken. So we have this board here and this board here. And then the boards that are formed are the carbon bromide board that is formed and the hydrogen bromide board is also formed. This is formed from, uh, it's like it has, the hydrogen has been substituted by the bromine. So this is the new boards that are formed. So name and the structure of the compound formed when methane reacts with excess chlorine in presence of UV. So we have methane, which is CF4, reacts with chlorine gas and it is excess to form, if it's excess, it means all the hydrogens have been replaced to form tetrachloroethane plus hydrogen chloride. So this is like the last product. So if you look at the structure, initially we had this. So and chlorine. So the first chlorine replaced to form one chloroethane, methane plus hydrogen chloride. Then it further reacts with more chlorine to form so the second one is also uh, replaced to form more hydrogen chloride, which is further also replaced to form a trichloro uh, methane, which finally forms tetrachloromethane, now with chloro chlorine all of them are replaced. So it happens simultaneously, but what helps us to know that this is going to be the final product is the, from the word excess. So if you want to know more about this reaction, it's the substitution reaction of alkenes. You can go back to organic chemistry and check that out, it's under alkenes. So that brings us to the end. So I hope you have been able to see how light can affect different reactions and having light can either increase the rate of reaction or decrease depending on the intensity. Like you saw in the bromide, silver bromide decomposes in the presence of light, but it also depends on the magnitude of the light. If it's too much light, it means the decomposition is going to happen more. If it's less light, it means the decomposition is not going to happen as more. So if you're able to remember this, it means that you can remember like some of the reactions when talker, like if you bubble like alkenes in bromine water, which is yellow, it's not going to like decompose, it's not going to decolorize. 
so it keeps it like that unique property so that's it for today uh see you in the next lesson as we discuss on the equilibrium see you then Thank you.